today I'm excited to be able to speak with Bapa Yahya Setia Maja, the President Director of BCA. The Indonesian story is a story that is not being told well enough. The growth of an economy that has been stable at about 5% for many years and the story of its leading bank uh, that has been able to capture that growth and build an institution that is world-class in both its uh, commitment to shareholders and building a franchise despite competition uh, and new technologies that are coming on stream. So I have a lot of questions uh, for Bapa Yahya. So you, in your personality, yeah. you embody the, the transformation of the country uh, and of the bank. And to be involved with the bank uh, at the time when it was the most important bank during the crisis, right? It was yeah. the bank that was most affected from the crisis. Yeah, yeah, right. To take it to where it is today is an incredible journey. So give me a sense, you know, from your perspective, yeah. how that journey has been. Thank you. Actually, uh, the one that we think that has been successful from BCA is to change a people's mind, the paradigm that if you put the money in the bank, you're saving. In the sense, you will get interest. We try to change this mind from interest uh, uh, needed into flexibility. They need the bank for transaction. So we change the saving account in BCA, not for saving anymore, but for transaction account. And because we have a lot of merchants, customers, they do all the businesses, we keep uh, excellent services on providing a payment system. That is the key. That's why if you look at our portfolio on the funding side, 82% from funding is saving and demand deposits. Only around 18% time deposit, which is very high cost. You can imagine today our cost of fund is only 1%. When Fed increases the uh, interest rate uh, since last year, it's been already 5%, right? We only increase our cost of fund 0.10% because of only time deposit. Ah, when we start uh, in after the crisis 99, we try to start introducing uh, internet banking. And then after that, we uh, also develop our mobile banking. But the most important one is actually how to educate and help our customer because you are familiar with digital banks and normally digital banks is all millennials. But in our case, our customer, now we have 34, 35 million accounts, yeah, from 17 years old to 95 years old. So you can imagine all the senior people, sometimes they are not familiar with a digital, fully digital. That's why we have so-called the call center. We have 4,000 people helping 24 hours people educating them, helping them in term they got a problem when they access to the digital, or if they got a fraud, they have cheated or somebody, we try to help them. That is the key success, so people feel comfortable banking with BCA, with the digital uh, banking services. And now I think only 0.3%, believe it or not, so only 0.3%, number of transactions in the branches, even though we have 1,250 branches now. The rest is out of the branch to ADC, ATM, digital, and majority is in digital. Mobile banking, internet banking, and uh, we have the new application of uh, mobile banking, so-called MyBCA. So people satisfied with these services. That's why they place their money, a lot of money, without hoping any interest. What they hope is excellent product, service excellent. That is the key actually. And second thing that we have to, because of cost of fund low, we able to offer our customer for the credit side also best loan. In the sense, the quality of loans of these uh, loans is excellent, prudent. That's why our non-performing loans, even after the crisis, is only 1.8%. And we have already covered Coverage of this NPL is 258%. So it's very safe for us. You know, what you are saying is so simple, yeah. but so profound, because that is the secret of banking. Yeah. And to listen to you 
you know, retell the story uh, because I've known your bank since before 1996, 97, yes. right? The 98 crisis. Yeah. I, I've known your bank very well. Yes. So what you're saying is that in the old days, it was saving to grow wealth, yeah. to compounded interest. Yeah. And somehow, after the Asian financial crisis, you started the bank on a long journey of saving for transactions, yes. for utilization. Yes. And you may not have realized this, but that's exactly where the deposit account is today. Yeah with the competition that the um, you know that the digital wallets are coming bringing into the play that's what they're doing they are turning the deposit account into a transaction account but you had figured it out over a long period of time yes. and you've inculcated that inculcated that into the personality of your bank the the culture the the operations of the people and and it's now resulted in this amazing um, you know, a demand deposit base that you have, which is the cheapest form of funding yeah. of any bank in Indonesia. Right. And right. number transaction all increases uh, very much. One day we processing 100 to 140 million a day. This is the number of transaction we processing, and all this digital is seamless. But yeah, we have to really secure the IT the security system, the database. We have three databases to protect this. Right. And also you're saying that when you have a very strong depositor base, you can grow your loan, loan book uh, very um, confidently. Yeah. So true. you were able to build your loan book. We are the biggest on mortgages, non-subsidized, because in Indonesia, we have BTN, we are working yeah. for subsidized mortgage. Well, we are not uh, doing the subsidized one. We are the biggest market share so far in Indonesia. Why? Because we able offer various interest rate, very cheap, so uh, people afford to get it. And then because of this, and also one thing that we try after the crisis, uh, COVID, yeah, we try to make a hybrid event before it's conventional one. We come into the ballroom, we make an expo. Yeah. There is a car, there is a houses, uh, selling uh, the mortgages and uh, car uh, financing. But now we mix it with the hybrid transaction. In the sense, people can come into the website and look exactly as they in in the ballroom itself. And they can choose which type of houses, the mm. size, the location, the the. 360 degree, he right. can see. Uh, imagine he are in the house itself. So by having this type of mixing, uh, digital and also the needs of customer, I think we have been quite successful on uh, uh, increasing our mortgages and our car financing now, also. in evaluating your bank, uh, we also put your bank alongside your other competitors, yeah. okay? Um, you know, Mandiri and, and the others. Um, and they were growing as well. Yes, okay? certainly. Now, what was the most important competitive issues that you faced uh, while you were growing the, the business? Yeah, I think to maintaining our customer, because as you were, that we choose our best credit customer, for example. Uh, for sure, other bank looking at these people. Uh, same people. They will offer a yeah. lower interest right. rate, if right. possible, bigger credit facilities, right? Um, less collateral, that is their aiming. That's why it's a unique and art for us, includes our brands, people, uh, regional people, how to protect. And relationship is the most important. Even though you, I tell you, the digital uh, uh, technology uh, are very, very, very advanced now, but in the bank, I still believe, bank is relationship. You cannot avoid. You cannot live only digitalize everything. You need still people. If people place to you only a few thousand US dollars, it's okay, digital. But once they put your money, thousand and millions of dollars, oh, sorry, I have to know somebody there. Uh, they have to take care of me. If I got problem, if I got uh, things that you have to help me right. directly, you should uh, anytime help them. That's why relationship is the most important on the banking business. I believe on that. Digital and relationship. That is the two things now they have, we have to uh, develop. You know, just listening to you, it's almost like a banking 101 course. Okay? <laughs> it's like going back to the basics, right? Yes. So digital, transactional, 
and then relationships yes. in order to retain, yes. especially... Very basic, but you have to be seriously to do that. Right. And excellent. And Indonesia's <clears throat> growth, how has that helped you? Like, uh, what about Indonesia do you think that people outside of Indonesia don't realize about the country? Uh, actually, Indonesia economy and monetary policy, it helps because you see, in U.S., they tighten in the liquidity, right? In Indonesia, they keep ample liquidity. In U.S., they increase the interest rate by 5%, 500 basis point. In Indonesia, so far, only 225 basis point they increase. And the credit still growing. And now we feel that this is maybe better to fight the inflation because you are dealing with the cost push inflation. You just increase interest rate, it double uh, knock yeah. out for people, especially the lower class. Yeah, they facing inflation plus high interest rate. But for middle up, it's okay. They enjoy more uh, deposit income, right? But for uh, Indonesia, I think by 225 basis point increase, this is just enough. And economy is going very well. Inflation managed at around four to five percent. The problem in uh, you know at, during the Asian financial crisis yeah. was also exposure to foreign exchange debt, yeah, yeah. especially for a lot of the corporates. Our uh, portfolio on corporate loans is about forty percent of our portfolio. Okay, but on funding side, ah, the funding side, yeah, is that yeah. is retail. Okay. Basically yeah. Now, what are the dangers that the corporations face? Uh, you know, is there uh, FX risk? Uh, you know, what is the exposure of Indonesian corporates to? We are lucky if you look in Indonesia economy, it helps uh, basically from the mining business, CPO business, and the export increase very well because the volume and the value of those uh, commodities also increases. That creates uh, big incoming uh, dollars to Indonesia. That's why if you look on the Bank Indonesia Reserve, it's been the biggest one, $145 billion, right? And they can influence the market, intervene the market anytime they need it, right? That's why it seems that during the crisis, uh, Bank Indonesia, the central bank can manage very well the, inter, uh, the uh, currency, rupiah currency, uh, by having only 225 basis point increase, the currency stabilized around 14,800 14, to 15,000. Before it's depreciated around 15,500, but now uh, strengthening to around 14,800. So I think uh, in the few years ahead, I think if uh, the uh, commodity price is still okay, right, the reserve of government okay, then investor more belief on investment, more investment in Indonesia, like for uh, nickel, for uh, all the mining uh, industry. A lot of investors from China come into Indonesia and they put a lot of money to grow this investment in Indonesia because EV, you know, because we have to participate also. ESG, very yeah. fun, uh, very yes. famous and very uh, important to address, right? Uh, if you look our portfolio, I think if growing around 14, to 15 percent, the uh, what they are sustainable loans, right? And then from the corporate side, it's been already 25 percent portfolio is the sustainable loan. You are concerned about the ESG also. It's very important. Right. So when did you start on your ESG journey? About uh, four years ago, I think three, four years ago. Okay. So you're well into in, uh, on the way. Yeah. Uh, have you been greening your books? Like, have you been? Um, you know, uh, have you been slowly uh, changing the profile of your loan book uh, to be more ESG compliant? Yeah, in the sense, the most important one, how to educate our customers. Because to reach the ESG, not only the bank, should a lot of work do by the customer also. So we have to educate them. How is the importance of ESG? And then they comply, we are happy with that. That's why it should be step by step to introduce, educate the customer side, and then after they comply, we uh, try to comply also. That will be uh, a better match. Right? right. Now, one aspect of Indonesia that's grown dramatically uh, is the consumption sector yeah. um, as a pillar of the economy. Right. It's, I think it's about 50% of the GDP yeah. Yeah. consumption now. Um, how did that happen? And how are you uh, benefiting from that? Yeah. Consumption, you can divide it into food and clothing, right? 
For the clothing, I think the competition from China was very severe. In general, uh, textile industry is on the downside, right? But on the food, ah, this is the good things, I ah. think. Even during COVID, yeah, people get stuck. They got locked in in their houses. But you see, in Indonesia, the uh, increase Agriculture. of the e-commerce, the e-commerce business, uh, quite fast growth, right? And people got help and still consuming in their house. They can order and this uh, e-commerce, e-commerce can serve them quite good, right? So people not go into the restaurant. But now after the COVID was uh, quote unquote, yeah, we hopefully was gone. Uh, people start to come to a uh, mall, to the restaurant. I think uh, the credit card business is good now. <laughs> yeah. The food is uh, 260 million people in Indonesia. They need food. So, so that is a good business, actually. Now, you had 2011 was when you became president director. Uh, yeah, 2011 become the president okay. director. Uh, you've now had, what, uh, 10, 11, 12 years, 12 years. Of, of, uh, of growing this business. Yeah, and yeah, it's right. organically... Yeah from the ground right, up. Right. What are the goals that you've set for yourself? Yeah. Um, uh, next step, what are you thinking about? Next steps. Uh, yes, I think uh, yeah, next step, uh, I don't know, was most likely become one of the commissioner of the company because in Indonesia, you know, there is two board system, the yeah. board of director and board of commissioner. Okay. Commissioner is helping the BOD to supervise the BOD, controlling also. That is a good uh, staging. You see yourself there. Yeah. That's for yourself. But uh, what goals are you giving the bank itself? Because, you know, yeah. you've you've now created one of the best books in banking mm. anywhere in the world. Yeah. Okay. So, so what's the next goal? Like The important book? one for me, if we have a meeting yeah, among the Bobby OD, right? When I make the decision, I not only say, this is my decision. I always telling the background why this, 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 because of this, 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 I make this decision. So by having this uh, system, people start to learn from me. I hope that PCA, not only because of me, right, should be the entity itself will go forever, right? That is my hopes, yeah? but we are preparing the successor uh, as a, uh, yeah, as a company, I think you cannot have one people forever, right? Should be a time that you step out and then other people will uh, replacing you. you. Now, in terms of successes, when you were being considered for president director, you'd been with a bank uh, at least seven or eight years. Uh, since 1990, so, oh, so I mean, already 10, 20, 20, 12 21 years. years. What? Oh, so president director after 21 years working. Uh, board of director, uh, 1990 to nine. 99, nine years. Nine, after, after nine after years after of being board of directors, yes. you became president director. Uh, yeah. Now, and at that time, the choice of someone like yourself, yep. um, was that easier than today? Because today, the skill sets in a bank, they're very technical. You yeah, know? Yeah. The treasury man is different from the retail man, yeah, it's yeah. different from Super. the risk man, hmm. different from the technology man. Yeah. Um, so what is, in your view, the vision of what a future leader in banking should be? I think in banking, the leader should be quote-unquote general, generalized, right? You are not having the special, right? But I feel that certain things is very important. First, the corporate banking and the credit side. You have to exactly know by the risk industries, whether it's corporate, it's commercial, SME, and consumer. It's different type of credit. You have to know the basic credit. And then the risk management, you look at SVB, yeah, the Silvergate Bank. It's prudent on one side. They buy the treasury papers, but they forget about uh, how long, about the time value of money, right? Yes. The discount, the big discount, yeah. So risk management is also important. Last but not least, I think you have to know the treasury also. Treasury is like a driver of a car. They have the pedal for gas and brake. also brake, right? You have to know. Uh, Sometimes I will give an example, right? Uh, like Messi, you know, Messi, right? Yeah. A very good football players, right? Yeah. And also like uh, Mbappe, for yeah. example. If you look, they are playing in uh, London, Right or in Doha, 
nice uh, feel, they will play optim, right? Okay. But once they play in the field that after rains and the it's, it's uh, many what they call it uh, very Patches bad, uh, bad uh, yeah. so it's dangerous. They, they cannot they cannot differently. They reserve their power, right? That's the same as the bank. If you look the macro condition, the monetary condition is good. Just put the gas. But once it's uh, drop, you have to put uh, break the break. Yeah, Did you have to really balancing to manage a bank. Not every target. Many I saw many CEO put target in the table. You have to Meet reach that. this target. Whatever happening, condition. it cannot like that. Right. When you see the situation is not right. Just reduce your target, no problem. But you look for long term, right? not for just next year, just for short term period. We are talking about business, is talking relationship with customer and long term, right? We have another approach for our customer. For example, if there is uh, in a the certain place there is a fire, right? A lot of customer uh, uh, got problem, right? Our people call them. How many credit you need for helping back you? Not, oh, I want to get back my money. Please ah, pay back, ah. pay back. Uh, what's your collateral? Yes. Different approach. When they got, they see the customer in big problem, they you just start resolve. collecting. That's the time they want to yeah. collect. We know the character of the customer. If it's a good character, expertise, I believe they can burn back their recovery. We have to help them. They cannot forget you. They will totally become the, what they call it, the good customer for us. Right. And this you have seen over your career yes. because you've right. seen many Indonesian corporates go through various cycles yes. over time, right? right? Final question. Um, future players, okay? Mm. Uh, you've already aced the game of banking. Now, who do you look at in terms of potential competition from outside the banking industry? You have Gojek, you've got Grab and all that, and they've all have huge customer base. You have 35 million customers, right? Um, <clears throat> what makes you interested or curious about where the changes will come nah, from? That's a very good question. If you ask me about seven, eight years ago, I will tell you, oh, I'm very scared with this fintech company because they said that they will eat up all the banking business. But now it's opposite. They become our customer <laughs> they and help. They want to be a bank. They need, oh, the, they need, they need the you. They, they become the your originator. They have all the wallets. When they want to fill in the wallet, they need a bank. So we cooperate with them. Now we have a fees that seven years ago, I never thinking or dream of this kind of fee base. Like uh, what I call it, the fee the VA virtual account, right? We have the top up fees, yeah. We have API. When we connect our system, we got an API. So this kind of fees an additional fee for us. We never imagine imagine before that this kind of fees can come into uh, our uh, income, right? That because all the fintech company now they are become our friends, right? We are grow together. So it's not uh, our enemy now. Right. And Indonesia itself, because, you know, except for the COVID period, it was growing in a steady clip. Yes. You know, 5% average uh, is not too fast and not yes. too slow. It, it's yes. a sustainable uh, growth model. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I, I think you've, you've been riding that model. And that's why and you've kept a very good book uh, as you grew your business. What, would, what advice would you give your successor? Yeah, I think... First of all, they have to look at the macro economy. That is the fundamental. The second thing is build the culture that we have already built. Teamwork. I don't believe that BCA success BCA because only me. I'm not the superhero like the American films, right? But I believe I trust my people. I give authority to them. I let them make decisions. If they are wrong, I say, this is a good lesson for you. Next time, don't uh, do another wrong time. If you are success, it's your success, not my success, right? So by having this teamwork, strong teamwork, we grow together. So the successful story of BCA, because we grow together, not because of one or two heroes there. No. So that is the basic culture that my success have to maintain. Okay. Yeah. And that's, what, that's the one uh, objective that you'll give him, that yeah. you will you will pass on to him to carry on. The reason we actually detected 
the strength of your bank was because you've now pipped, pipped Singapore banks in terms of total capitalization, right? How did that happen? Because, um, you know, you're now the best capitalized bank in Southeast Asia. Yeah, on the market cap, right? I'm a lot meet the investor from Boston, New York, and some other. Now, Fera, my CFO, meet them, right? We address like this. When we say the economy is good, we say to them, this is a good year. If it's bad, we say bad years, right? That's one thing. Second to that, and we deliver what we said. And normally, if we targeted, let's say, loan growth 8%, we reach 10%. If we targeted 15%, we reach 18%. It's uh, basically uh, uh, every year is like that. Second to that is, I know the price to book value of BCA is high. So investors need cash flow. So I give them the internal dividend, interim dividend. Not many companies giving interim dividend. Every December, we give a cash flow for them. And final dividend, last one, I think nearly 60%, the dividend payout. So they enjoy, not only hoping capital gain, but the real cash flow, they got it. So the investor that buy BCA basically is like a pension fund from the university, insurance company, the one who need a long-term investment. So yeah. for them, it's buy and hold. Ah, okay, long-term yeah. investment. Not for sell and buy, sell and buy. That's why it's the rule of supply and demand. Yes. Because they are buy and hold, a lot of investors only hold. So the one on circulation become less and less. That's why the price is increasing. The valuation this is, is high. amazing. You've aced the uh, equity. Yeah. part of the business. Yeah. Um, how much of your investors are domestic and, and, and foreign? Uh, I think basically our major in, uh, investor is uh, Indonesian, right? Um, uh, Jarum company. It's owned about uh, 47 to 50, 51, I think 51%. Yeah. The rest, I think around 46% is floating share. Uh, more than half. More than half, uh, I would say maybe 35% is holding by a foreign investor from um, Europe, from uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, also from Malaysia, uh, sorry, from uh, US, right? a lot of foreign investors. So, Pak Yahya, you've uh, kept faith with your customers, with your employees, and with your investors. Uh, I think it's a great achievement, and I just am very happy to be able to capture this story with you. Thank you, today. thank you, thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you for Asian bankers, also great. Thank you.